Okay, so today we're going to go over programming for a client. We're going to talk about blood ranges and then uh, review some nutrition stuff. So you got a client, they're coming in at 10 o'clock. What's your program look like? Uh, I'm going to do a basic program because hmm? I don't know the person. I don't know. Who so what are you going to start with? What's your... Uh, I'm going to start with warm-up. Mm -hmm. Warm-up with band, with maybe some bridge with the ball. Okay. Maybe some sit walk, watch mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to... I'm going to prepare because it's a girl, so mm -hmm. I'm going to prepare a bra workout, okay. not a bra workout. So, gotcha. so I'm going to do one, two, three, hip thrust, so hip thrust into goblets. Okay. Into goblets, right away. Do a hip thrust first. Yeah, and goblets then, two. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So yeah. I say hip thrust first, okay. goblet yeah. two, Good. and step up. So what's going to be your A? My A is going to be maybe cable wall okay. or... Nice. What about your B? Uh, maybe abs. Good. What type of abs? One, two, three. Maybe a, uh, a plank, side plank. Nice. Maybe just with a, with a ball. Like so we got a hinge pattern. We got a pull pattern. Yeah. So uh, cable wall. Mm -hmm. So cable wall. Plank. Cable wall. Then abs. Some abs. Then the second thing is going to be a goblet. So I need a hinge, pull, mm -hmm. abs, goblet squat. So knee squat. Yep. I'm going to do some uh, pull, some push. Okay, what would you like to do? Maybe a push up or maybe on the wall. Yeah. Now she's in good shape, so you can she's do more. You can do push ups. Mm -hmm. I can do push up. I don't know. So we got a hinge, we got a squat, we got oh, a push, we got a pull. The, the girls from the thing? No, no. Uh, she's, a, she's a neuroscientist, she's a professor. She comes in regularly. But she's a class passer, so this is designing a workout for someone who's coming in a class pass. And we got a hinge, we got a squat, we got a push, we got a pull, and then add in. Any type of exercise that maybe she wants. You do an ab exercise, you want to do some cardio, you choose on that. Some cardio, I'm going to do some, uh, some kind of short circuit. Yeah, yeah. Then what are you going to do the last one? You got step ups. How about instead of step ups, because she's a little more advanced, do okay. reverse lunges. So reverse lunges. Which is our unilateral. So when we look into programming, all we're looking at the patterns of movement. We got a squat, which is more knee dominant, we got a hinge, which is more hip dominant. Unilateral, which would be your step up. More advanced would be a lunge. Push vertically, pull vertically, push horizontal, pull horizontal. And so then maybe throw in an accessory. What, you know, maybe isolate the glutes. So when you do a squat, how many joints are working? Just uh, the your hip and your knee. It's two. Hip, one, so two, let's three. isolate. So if she wants to engage the glutes, what are the actions, the four actions of the glutes, Casey? Flexing. They do what? And extend, which is coming back. Flexion. Abduct, which is coming out too. Frontal plane, sagittal plane. And posterior rotation. Posterior. External rotation. And posterior tilt. Posterior tilt. So we have extension. We have extension twice. Yeah. Let's get some isolation abduction in there. I'm going to put a band. Okay. I'm going to do with a band. Band. You can have her lie on the side and do a band yeah. abduction. Mm -hmm. That. Uh, then, 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 I'm gonna do some, uh, maybe some arms. Okay, good. Maybe some arms, because she's a couple maybe some uh, curls. So, so, you look at the workout that we did yesterday. So, we had a girl come in class, and I appreciate John and Tyler for helping out with the workout. And it's a perfect example of a stereotypical client, but also a potential trainer. So, so she was in good shape, pardon? Was she trained? No, she just works out. So she paid NASM two thousand dollars to get the NASM CPT and the FNS, and so FNS is a fitness, <coughs> it's a nutrition course. Oh, okay. And from communicating with her in class, she was wowed because the information that she was reading in the textbook she just didn't understand, which makes sense. Like if I'm trying to read French, I could study as long as I ten hours a day, but I can't read. Kutan, what does that mean? <laughs> so what's your reference point? So when you read a textbook like NASA or any anatomy book, it can be very challenging. So when she's in class, she was super wild. So they took her through a workout. Was the wor workout the hardest thing in the world? No. <laughs> For her, yeah. For her, it was really challenging, though. And it's always interesting because she said, I don't need to work on my glutes because I train them really hard. <laughs> and then we took her through a fairly easy upper body workout, and she was toast. So, well, even the wall ball, the wall squats, or the wall squats, uh, with the press, mm -hmm. that toasted really Yeah, good. right? So, that's so 
when you look at the size principle, type one, type two, she has development on her lower body. She thinks it's fine. Do you think she would want to improve that? Of course. Do you think she's lifting properly with overload, engaging her type twos? No. So how much better could she change and optimize her, her physique? Lots of opportunity. And this is for someone who trains regularly. So you took her out of her comfort zone, and what were the exercises that we delivered? Um, chin-ups. Chin-ups? Uh, she couldn't do any? Uh, no. Sets of three eccentric. Planks? Uh, rows, bent over rows. Bent over rows? The ball press. Squat press. Rotating T's. Uh, rotating T's and then the uh, single arm. Uh, the split stands. Were any of those exercises flashy? No. Guarantee she's probably done all of them before. Surprisingly, I bet you she hasn't done this one. Oh, People don't do. Too. Hmm? The one with landmine too. Yeah, landmine. Landmine and also split stands. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so we didn't get flashy. Yeah. We didn't. Go crazy on exercises. We didn't do all this crazy mumbo jumbo shit. What we did was we, we, we educated her on proper movement. Is the girl from the aerobic stuff? The yeah. Stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay, so she was the one that worked with Eric. Yeah, we met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember. I, I did, did, did yeah. a video for her. Yeah. So when you look at what confidence does, I know I can get anyone in the best shape of life. And that's going to come with you practicing more. You can be intimidated by the way someone looks, like, oh my God, she's in good shape. I gotta do something really challenging. And we took her through the basics, we pushed, we pulled, we did all upper body stuff, and she had a great workout. So that's how you properly back program, pardon? I can do back squat. Yeah. Uh, I don't do goblet, I do yeah, back squat. Do back squat. Especially with people who are really more advanced, if they claim they work out, it's good to take them through workouts or exercises that are more challenging. <coughs> Let's transition real quickly from the programming aspect into Ivan, you got some blood results done, and we're going to talk about uh, your blood chemistry that I highly suggest everyone getting, and challenge your clients to get it. You could offer some type of analysis. You could do nutritional consultations that you could charge an extra $100. You could do some type of blood analysis where you sit down and you go over, you can't interpret it for them, like, oh, you need to eat more of this or that because of the blood, but what you could do is you could educate your clients on what those numbers mean. So the normal range for females when it comes to testosterone, the, Females do produce testosterone, just not nearly as much as guys. 30 to 90 units per deciliter. For males, it's roughly 300 to 1,200. That reference point will change. Ivan, I think you said like 250 to 900. I've seen like 350 to 1,300. The ranges will be different. So what was your testosterone level? Uh, it was 235. Okay, 235. So he would technically have low testosterone level. Now, what would be some complications from having low testosterone? Fatigue. Fatigue. Sex drive can go down. Energy's low. Do you experience low energy? Yes. What could you possibly attribute that to? Sleep. Sleep. Stress as well. Those are the big blocks. Now, he could go to a GNC store, take some testosterone boosters. They won't do shit. Maybe they, they convince you that they are, and you start lifting heavier, and your, your testosterone levels go up a little bit. But the big blocks that are going to have an effect on your testosterone, sleep, stress, nutrition, excess adiposity. So for your clients that don't exercise, you're definitely going to have lower levels. I wouldn't be too concerned about this, this, this number for Ivan specifically, due to the fact you don't sleep much. The way you want it to be? He wants to be between 300 and 1,200. How young are you? 25, so that number should be closer to 500. And some things that will help with that, sleeping regularly. They say once you start getting less than six hours of sleep, your T levels can drop significantly. Hydration, being dehydrated can drop it by like 50%. It's a range. Just like every day, do you always have the same energy levels? Some days you're a little higher, some days you're a little lower, some days you're grumpy, some days you're happy. Just like your, your, your chemistry, it's gonna vary. So what would be some things that can help him increase his testosterone naturally? Sleep. Get more sleep. Yeah. But can you do that? Just, yeah, we can try to. We can try to, but that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's tough. So if it's someone who just has a hard time sleeping and they can't get into deep sleep, that's where you could have a conversation about that. But just because of his lifestyle right now, you're working three jobs, that may not be in the equation. So what are, what are some other things that will help increase testosterone? Yep, water. He has his water thing, so I'm probably... Workout. Uh, 
heavier? So here's the interesting thing about that. So if you start working out more, that's a stress. Uh, so more exercise may potentially have an effect with that. You have to be careful. Oh, okay. Specifically, cardio could lower it a little bit. So you want to be a little careful. Do you like heavier weight? Like... Do you look heavy already? Yeah. Okay. So for your clients that aren't lifting heavy, that would be a benefit. Let's potentially get you. But remember, we want to be training for at least a month. Strength and ligaments and tendons. You can go through that same workout, 15 reps or so. After a month, then you can maybe get down to six to eight. And the overload will potentially help with that, but it's going to be long term. Vitamin D would be a big one. Remember, we're not dietitians, we're not doctors. I'm not going to say, I mean, you need to start taking 15,000 units of vitamin D seven days a week. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to suggest you talk to your doctor to see what they say. Vitamin D would probably help you with your uh, testosterone level. Most people are deficient in that, so getting between at least 5,000 units is going to be suggested. I talked about something else. What did I say? D, asparic acid. And this is an interesting one. Now, if you want to ever look up in a supplement, where do you go? Examine.com. And they are going to tell you some interesting stuff about D, asparic acid. The studies are conflicting. So try it yourself. If you take the asparic acid, some studies have shown your T levels will go up. Some will show you the T levels will go down if you have high testosterone levels. How we know? It's a testosterone booster, but it's temporary. So sometimes it only lasts a week or to a week and a half. So here's how you do this. So when you do when you take the asparic acid, it's not a testosterone or anything. It's an amino acid. It's one of the 20 amino acids we learned that in nutrition. So we have complete and incomplete. Some the body needs, some the body can manufacture itself. So with the asparic acid, what can happen is you take it for a week. If you notice your energy levels start going up, then maybe it's going to help with you. So continue to take it maybe for two or three weeks, go off for a week and then repeat. Now if you don't notice any change for the week that you're taking it. What do you think you would do? Stop thinking. It's pretty cheap. It's like 10, 15 bucks. You no, know, it's, it's something you can try. I have a question. Uh, not about the libido, but about the testosterone, because you have you, you use two things for the, the libido for people, and for other people, one take a build, one build muscle. Mm -hmm. and testosterone has a lot of different. It's not just for muscle building. It's not just for helps with fat loss, it helps with libido, it helps with energy. There's a lot of factors of what testosterone does. And so, what's your question? My question was, uh, it's good to take that for, for me because me, uh, so asparagus asparagus me is good to take. If you're a guy, try it. Uh, girls, don't try it. Because girls are lacking testes. And that's where deasparic acid has an impact on guys. So my brain communicates with my adrenal glands, which then communicate with my testes, which produce testosterone in males. For girls, it's brain, Adrenal glands, testosterone. So obviously they don't have testes. So the difference between the two, that supplement specifically may help with guys. If a guy comes in, I'm gonna look at him and think, oh, you should start taking diasporic acid. No. If you go get your blood drawn, I can look at your levels and say, this may help you. I'm not saying you have a deficiency or this is something you can freak out about. It's like someone who comes in and they're overweight. Do you think cardio will help them with the program? Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying you have to do cardio every single day in this amount. It's like cardio may help with you. Okay, so For women, what should our testosterone levels be at? 30 to 90. Okay. So if you were to get your, I had a nurse I was working with, and her levels were at 15. That's lower than normal. Yeah. She had low sex drive, crazy low energy. So I said, make sure to talk to your doctor, see what they said. They gave her some testosterone replacement therapy. Yeah. And it helped her get up to like 40 or 50 levels. Her energy went up. She felt good again. Yeah. I'm not going to tell her she should take testosterone. No way. Are all these things on a basic blood test? No, you need to ask specifically for your blood lipid levels and your hormones. Okay. And be specific and say, I want testosterone, I want C-reactive protein, which is CRP. That tells you how inflamed you are. You can get cortisol. Down here you have GFR, that's globular filtration rate. Cortisol. Pardon? You have to go to an endo for this? Cause my, no. My regular, I got my blood work done like a, a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago. And it had the T3, T4, but it didn't have the other stuff, so they sent me to an endo. A lot of doctors are going to do the least amount because they don't want to charge for the more expensive tests. You need to 
exacerbate the symptoms, so they'll do it. Yeah, okay, so blood lipid, I'm going to make a lot of Blood lipid, it's all in your syllabi. And blood chemistry, you're going to look at your, it's going to get your hormones, your testosterone, cortisol, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, those are all in there. It's your blood lipid, which will be your HDLs. Which ones are good, HDL or LDL? HDL. HDL, those are the healthy ones. Less than 40 is considered a risk stratification, according to the American College of Sports Medicine. 45 to 55 is considered uh, normal. Above 60 is so good it negates having higher cholesterol levels. That's what resistance training is going to help, HDL levels. LDLs, think of the lousy, low-density lipoproteins. This is all part of blood chemistry? So this, these should be less than 100. Greater than 130 is a concern. I'm never going to tell a client to go. You can't obviously prescribe, but I'm never going to tell a client to go off of their medication. If Sam comes in and he has high lipid levels and his LDLs are at 150, I'm not going to say start training with me three times a week for the next month and you can go off your meds. You can't do that. Exercise will help you get stronger and think of your, your blood as like goop right now. It's a little thicker. Training regularly with me, your blood may get a little thinner in a good way. That's something you get rechecked in six months and see if it goes down. That's it. Blood pressure, what is that? Blood pressure. pressure and blood going in and out of your heart. So it's the pressure against the arterial walls. What's the artery that goes around the heart? The huh? Ventral. Nope. Uh, the Atriums are on top. Atrium, ventricles, ventricles, are ventricles are on bottom. The artery that goes around. Oh, coronary. Good. Coronary artery. That's what gets clogged. When these levels are high, <coughs> the LDLs and the HDLs are low, and you're stressed out, and you're not sleeping, your chance for coronary artery disease is going to increase. When your blood pressure is greater than 140 over 90, that's called what? Hypertension. Hypertension. That's what they call the silent killer, because all of these things start adding up. High cholesterol, stress, sleep, you're in traffic, your blood pressure's high, you have a heart attack. Heart rate, 70 over 80 is considered normal. That's what most of your clients are going to be. Once you get above 100, that's a risk stratification. I'm not training you. Go to the hospital. Obviously, wait 10 minutes, recheck, and see if it comes down a little bit. But you're, right now, at your guys' desk, your heart rate should not be high. It should be 60 to 80. 50, even 40, that's great. It means you're healthy. Blood pressure should be 120 over 80. If you're at 100 over 70, if you're at 90 over 60, that's fine. It starts getting below, like, once, like below 60, below 40. Again, I'm not a cardiologist. I don't know. That's, that's not normal. Go get it checked out. Too low is potentially bad. Too high is too bad. We want to be at Goldilocks right in the middle. Just like with all these hormones, pretty much you want it to be above the normal range. So your HDLs, you want to be, you know, 60s or so. LDLs, I'd like you to be below, because those are the lousy ones, maybe 70 or 80. Yeah? Do you know if there's like a correlation between blood pressure and uh, like heart rate? No, it's two different things. Maybe like uh, gas and oil. So, or reps and weight. Well, so, because like my heart rate's like super low, but my blood pressure, so it's like consistently like 130, 135-ish, over like 40. So think of, that's, so like, that's your rate? Yeah. The sound is the pressure. Yeah. So you could have a high rate and a low pressure. Yeah. You could have a high pressure and a low rate. Yeah. They don't necessarily go hand in hand. If someone has high blood pressure, they don't necessarily have a high resting heart rate. Yeah, because it's like super hot. So like, I mean, 130 over like 40. So it's almost like bad on both sides. So. Yeah, so that's something. Stress, sleep, <clears throat> it can be genetic as well. Yeah. If it's consistently really, I mean, high, I go to the doctor, bad, check it out. I don't have bad stress or anything, so it's just like, your hat says 107 percent tired. Uh, <laughs> so if I go to the doctor and I like want all tired. this stuff done, but I don't want to get sent to another doctor, what, am I, what should I like? It's going to be your insurance. I know what they, they, I, they could tell you that you need to go to the endocrinologist, and that's what you have to do. But what do I say? I feel you can go to. There's a Next Health. Yeah, it's, I love Next Health. It's, it's 200 dollars to get yeah, all this analyzed. Get on their chamber. The ice chamber? Yeah, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do anything. You just wasted fifty dollars on it. I did as well. I, got for free, but I went in there to try it, talk to everyone. I did all the results there. They'll have a nurse practitioner. Yeah, yeah. Here, right? But if I want to go to the doctor, what do I say? I feel for them to do all this stuff. I've been experiencing low energy, low sex drive. I've been sleeping well. My stress levels have been pretty normal. I'm taking a class right now, and it's health related. And one of our projects is to get our full blood lipid analysis with 
hormones and everything, I want to get that done. Wait, so if I have, if I get this done and I have high HDL, so above 60, my blood pressure is kind of like... No, so different. So cholesterol and pressure, I wouldn't relate the two. Okay. So if you had high total cholesterol or high LDLs, and your HDLs are really high, I wouldn't be as concerned. Again, I'm not a doctor telling you, oh, you're fine. But you exercise regularly, you're young, if you don't have uh, family history of that stuff, not too worried about it. My mom said that they all had strokes like, consistently, so it's like, I know high blood pressure is like different family. Yeah. So let's talk about nutrition. Segue into that, we have how many macronutrients? Three, alcohols in its own little category. Some people will consider it a macro because of the fact that one gram equals how many calories for alcohol? Seven. Seven. What about for protein? Four. Fat? Four. Oh, sorry, nine. 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 Carbs? Four. Which one of the macronutrients is the worst? Worst. Huh? None of them. Yeah, none of them are bad. They all play a role. You have micronutrients, and what are they? Um, like your minerals. Minerals in vitamins. Water is in its own little super category. Out of those six, I think the one that we have the most control over that can help your clients the most, water. Let's start drinking half your body weight in ounces. The best way to monitor hydration is via the color of your urine. Should look like lemonade. If it's like apple juice, start drinking water a lot because you could cut your testosterone levels in half. You could uh, lose five, six, seven pounds. And if you have that deficiency, Optimization for performance and just mental health is going to be lower. The more the water is clear, the more your pee is clear, the more it better it is. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> so protein, what is the basic unit? Amino acid. Amino acid. We have essential and non-essential. What's the best way to get a complete protein? Eggs. Animal products. Eggs have the highest biological value. Where you're going to get them all. If you're working with vegans, vegetarians, and they report their hair isn't that strong, their nails aren't that strong, hair loss, low energy levels, their skin isn't the healthiest. We're not going to tell them which mm -hmm. aminos to get. We can educate them and let them know that as a vegetarian or a vegan, you're not optimizing the complete protein. There's 20 amino acids of which you could be lacking some. I'm going to suggest supplementing with some type of protein that gets them all because you are not consuming animal products and I respect that. You don't have to have eggs or uh, meat to have it. You could have, create some you know, beans and rice, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, whatever. That will get you a full amino profile. Carbs, what is the basic unit? Like glucose. More glucose more is one. With monosaccharides, you have glucose. Fructose. Fructose. Galactose. 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 So when you put these two, two of them together, like a glucose and a... Galactose, you get lactose, which is a disaccharide. You have a bunch of them, it's a polysaccharide. So carbohydrates are, should not be vilified. There's two basic categories of carbs. Sugar, fiber. How many grams of fiber should males be getting a day? 40. Roughly 40. Females? 30. Roughly 30. What are your suggestions for someone who has not is not consuming a lot of fruits and vegetables? Eat more. Are you going to tell your clients to start eating Metamucil or having Quest bars? No. What is the benefit of consuming more fiber? Your GI tract will be healthy. You're, you're feeding the good bacteria in your, in your gut or you're pooping more. Sure. If you're constipated, we had a girl who was doing a prep. She was consuming a, uh, not that many calories. And she was constipated for almost a week. That's not normal. Other benefits of fiber. Pardon? Thermodynamics, so you have the thermal effect of food, higher percentage, as with what other macro? Protein. Protein, 30%, it burns more. There's been studies that link consuming soluble and insoluble fiber, I don't want to say soluble, don't quote me on that. One of them helps lower coronary artery disease. So the more fiber you consume, the less likely you will die of coronary artery disease. What's the last macronutrient? Fat, of which that's where we have the lipoproteins, LDLs and HDLs. You have cholesterol, which shouldn't be vilified either. Fat, basic unit. Fatty acids. Fatty acids. So that's a basic summary of the macros. Let's go over digestion real quick. We chew, that process is called mastication. One of the strongest muscles in the body. Uh, this one, the muscle. 
not masseter. Mastication, you chew, you swallow. What's the flapper? Gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius. No, it's the G, correct? No, it's There's a G in there. E. No, that's the small intestine. It's an E. E. Epiglottis. Epiglottis. You swallow epiglottis, covers your trachea, because we don't want food to go into your lungs. What's the food pipe called? Esophagus. Esophagus. Then where does it go? Stomach. stomach. What's the purpose of the stomach? Break down. Not necessarily no, break down. Bacteria. To toxify the food you're consuming. You have HCL, pepsin, pepsinogen, all these gastric juices that are going to kill stuff, so then it enters the next part, which is? The duodenum. Good. The duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. Jejunum ileum. D J I. Small intestine is where most of your absorption takes place. And then what's the last part? Large intestine. Ascending, transverse, descending, and you have your colon. And then and, uh, then it comes out like that. Just like that. We go to the west one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So 